I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the uh, Pembroke Board of Selectmen meeting, uh, Monday, May 14th, 2018. And we'll start off our meeting with our Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. See, first thing on the agenda tonight would be a reorganization of the Board of Selectmen. And do we have any motions from any Mr. of the Mr. Chairman, I would move that the um, Chairman's position be filled by Matthew Furlong. Second. Yes. Second. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none. Vote by roll call. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 And yes. So, new Chairman. So uh, we can take right over and, uh, and do the rest of it if you'd like. All right, thank you. <laughs> I think he had done a pretty good job while I was away anyway, so. He was just practicing. He was just practicing. <laughs> just change the names. Uh, so we need a motion for uh, Vice uh, okay. Chair and for um, a clerk. Are there any vos motions for Vice Chair? Mr. Chairman, I nominate Arthur Boyle. Second. So we have a motion and a second, and it will be taken by a roll call. Yes. Yes. I vote yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Very good. So, Arthur Boyle is now the vice chairman. Congratulations. Thanks, we'll be great team. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, we just need the town clerk. Not the town clerk, the clerk. clerk Mr. Chairman, I nominate Bill Bolter. Second. Do you have a motion and a second? You take it a roll call. Yes. Anybody else interested in it? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, not a big job, but. Um, I will take it. So if it's voted. All right. Yes. Yes. I vote yes. 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 Okay. Very good. All right. So the bill is now declared, and the board has been reorganized. Next on the agenda, we'll be meeting with. Oh, actually, that's at seven fifteen. So in the meantime, we'll be taking care of some board action <coughs> items. First one being to authorize the town administrator to execute community compact grant funded by ADA Trent. No, I just wanted to give it to you. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure I didn't forget, because I always forgot. Oh, yes. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Before we take action on this next item, can we ask the town administrator to explain to the board and the public uh, the ADA transition plan study? Yes. Uh, members of the board, uh, this, um, these are one of the best practices that the town applied for when they entered into the community compact program. As you know, the community compact program has been in existence since uh, Governor Baker took office in January 2015. Uh, the program became uh, eligible for uh, cities and towns uh, throughout the Commonwealth in the summer of 2015. 
um, at the, uh, I uh, approached uh, both the DPW Commission and the, uh, about the Complete Streets Program, as well as the, as the Board of Selectmen uh, regarding this program in the fall of 2015. Um, there's uh, some correspondence that's uh, there for, between the DPW director and myself regarding uh, the uh, uh, comments made by the DPW commissioners on the Complete Streets Program. And then, of course, um, the, I had discussions with the Board of Selectmen um, in late 2015, early 2016 regarding that. Uh, the Board had some concerns, and so uh, that was put on the back burner at the time. And then uh, as the year went on, then uh, we were able to get involved in the program again. And the two best practices that we got funded for were the uh, five-year long-range uh, uh, budget forecasting that was presented to the selectmen a couple of weeks ago by UMass Boston. And the other best practice that we got funded for uh, was for an ADA transition plan, which allowed the, um, the town to uh, apply for uh, ADA uh, projects um, to benefit the, the community uh, and all of our uh, town-owned facilities as well as recreational areas. So um, based on uh, proposals, requests for proposals that I sent out to various engineering firms, I'm requesting that the board uh, approve the town administrator to sign an ADA transition plan contract with uh, Weston and Sampson. So could I ask also, we need this to be the study to be done in order to apply for state grants related to handicap access. That's correct. And that um, this study hasn't been that I thought to. Nope. They haven't. Well, they haven't done it yet. No. No. Oh, okay. So. And the fee that I see the fee here that's coming out of the town before we were able to afford to get these other grants for the ADA compliant. Well. Let's backtrack. Okay. You need to have the plan in place in order to apply for construction grants to help with ADA compliance okay. on town-owned facilities. This is being funded by the Community Compact Program. Right. And so we've already received the money. The money is, oh, is okay. wired Sorry. to the town. Perfect. And yeah, uh, we go from there. Thank you. And it already has started. That's what I thought. And we received some money for that already. So, good. And this is not just one particular <clears throat> place. This is townwide. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you accept a motion, I move to authorize the town administrator to ex execute community compact grant funded ADA transition plan study with Weston and Sampson. Second. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none. It passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, we were remiss after the opening to welcome our new selectman, John Brown. So, John, congratulations on, on your win, and uh, we all look forward to working with you. Would you like to say something? That is true. Now uh, the time. Okay, uh, if I can actually do a statement, that would be wonderful. Sure. Okay. With the chairman's permission. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, okay. I want to thank the people of Pembroke for giving me an opportunity to serve them as their member of the Board of Selectmen. Being a public servant is something I've always wanted to be. From my early years in New Jersey, from my time on Capitol Hill, the best feeling in the world is helping others who need help from their public officials. I enjoy the process of introducing policy, discussing issues, allowing the issue to be voted upon and implemented for the betterment of our citizens. We as a board have an awesome responsibility to help so many on the local level and the people's and with the people's help, we can accomplish great things for Pembroke's future. So to the public who are watching tonight and who are here tonight uh, in the audience, I have a test for you. Please get involved in our many town boards and committees. Let your voice be heard and help us push Pembroke forward for a greater good for our citizens. We have many issues to tackle in the coming months which will affect our town's people, and I look forward to discussing it with my colleagues on the board and how to solve these issues during my term as your selectman. Lastly, I need to thank several people. Without their support, I wouldn't be sitting here today. To my wife, Tara, and my son, Connor, without your patience and understanding throughout the years, I would have never been able to have the courage to run and be where I am now serving as a public selectman. 
to one of my first mentors, Bill Henfey, a former mayor of a uh, town of North Wildwood, New Jersey. You're missed every day, and I hope I have, can be half the public servant you were to the people you represented. And I hope I can make you proud. I'm trying to get through it. I want myself and the board can accomplish now and in the future. Thank you. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Very good. Welcome aboard. Thank you. All right. The next action item is a vote. The Recreation Commission recommendations for appointment Jennifer Skinner of 23 Sparrow Lane and Kristen Cullinane of 63 Misty Meadow Road. Are, are Jennifer or Christine in tonight? No. We have a letter from the Recreation Commission requesting. Oh, okay. recommending their appointment. Mr. Chairman, I would move the appointment of Jennifer Skinner and Christine Cullinane to the Recreation Commission. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, it passes unanimously. We'd also like to welcome Jennifer and Christine. The next action item is to consider the application for a road, roadside stand slash farm stand permit from David Nash of 47 Mattachusett Street. Mr. Chairman, I would move granting the application for the roadside farm stand. Mr. Nash has been there for many years and is a fixture on uh, Mattachusett Street. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, this passes unanimously. All right, so we wanted to table these minutes and yeah, the, right? um, yeah, if you want, uh, I'll make a motion that we table the minutes of April 23rd, 2018, because they are incomplete at this time. Second. All right, with a motion and a second to table the minutes of April 23rd. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I, I vote aye. I abstain. I wasn't here. Okay. So we have four in favor and one abstention. Currently 712. Is Ken Rowell of Outfront Media here to go early? Ken, are you ready to present? We are. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you for having us and giving us this opportunity to kind of talk about our idea and um, what we're proposing on 275 Oak Street. Does everyone have a copy of the current proposal? I've actually not sure if we have any. Um, so there's kind of two parts to the proposal. Um, there's the outline about the economic contribution and all the benefits of and then the second phase, um, which is the outfront, is kind of more, if, if we can just skip to that section, then we'll go back to kind of the written proposal that we have, it's easier to follow that way. Um, does everyone know what we're proposing? I think it would be beneficial to the public watching at home for a description for this. Definitely. Um, so on 275 Ocean, we're proposing a digital billboard, uh, 14 feet by 48 feet wide, um, 70 feet tall. And in our proposal, we've outlined a uh, community benefits um, proposal in it, where the town would not only benefit from economic uh, contribution from us, but as well as um, advertising on the billboard to community messaging, outreach, youth programs, nonprofit programs, and we guarantee the town a 15 hours minimum a month to utilize that space and however they need it to. Um, the final, the financial contribution would be kind of set up in two different ways. It would be normal real estate taxes, and then minus that amount, we would have a total contribution of $32,000 a year annually um, for 20 annual payments. Um, so it's kind of the economics basics of it. Um, and then through, I can go through real quick kind of what we've done in other towns, how it's worked, how it's benefits the community, how it supports local business, um, and really how it's driven uh, commerce to some of the smaller businesses a little bit further off Route 3 and how it could benefit them. Um, as you may have heard, there's another proposal out there in the town of Marshfield to develop two other um, structures that would space out the development of a Pembroke structure. 
there's a small parcel of land that actually extends across Route 3. Um, <coughs> that is Marshfield land that would space out any development of a billboard or benefit to uh, the town of Pembroke. So Marshfield would, in essence, build a billboard on the Pembroke side of the highway and reap all the benefits. Um, we're trying to move as quickly as we can. We have a ZBA hearing next week. Um, so we figured this is a good way to get out the message, kind of what we're outlining and basically show everyone, because it, it's been a very slow process. So. Um, kind of talking about the regulations. There can only be one billboard for every thousand feet uh, alongside one side of the highway. That being said, zoning, industrial zoning comes into play, residential mixed use. So we've identified um, 275 as one of the ideal locations where this would be a one and done program. Be one billboard, no one else would develop in, on the side of Pembroke, given whether it's zoning, uh, residential, or anything like that. Um, billboards are, are heavily state regulated. Um, so there's a lot of conditions before we even build them. We, we have to be compliant on the state level. One of them is the changing of displays. The display has to be up and static for a minimum of 10 seconds. Um, and when it goes to transition, it has to be an instant transition. It can't be bright, flashing lights. It's not like a screensaver. It doesn't fade off. It's, it's instantaneous. Um, the billboard has to be uh, does not display illumination, movement, uh, or appears to change in intensity during the static display period, basically. Again, it's just strictly static. Um, the billboard automatically adjusts during the day for ambient light. Um, it can never be 0.3 foot candles above ambient light. So during the middle of the day, that's when it's brightest at night, it's conditioning down itself. And this is all state regulated. Um, so we're not, we're not turning it up at night, it's actually the exact opposite. We're powering it way, way down, almost 5% of its uh, usage. Um, the permit holder, in, in this case would be us, um, we have to designate a minimum of 15 hours of um, advertisement and messaging to mass DOT, and that, that's heavy, re heavily regulated. It's not we're putting the, bill, the messaging up at midnight and we're running it from midnight to 2 o'clock in the morning. That's 15 hours evenly dispersed throughout the day. Uh, 15 hours a month, but we just divide that up in 10 second increments throughout the day evenly. And we're actually audited on that every month by the state. And that, that's a condition of our permit. If we're not compliant, we actually lose our permit with the state. So it's a pretty, pretty strict process. Um, we can kind of skip over that. This is a chart that kind of explains how ambient lighting foot candles are measured. Um, Basically, it's lighting that you wouldn't see. It's not. It's not specially bright. It's something that you would see if you were driving down 53 or, or something like that. It's not aggressive lighting. Our billboards are actually targeted directly towards Route 3. Um, and then as we go through, I'll show you some pictures where the billboard. You, you can't see it from driving up closer. You'll see the structure itself, but you won't see the glow from it. You, you won't see the messaging moving on it. It's all directed either north or southbound. Um, if you switch to this, um, this local benefits page, we kind of, is everyone familiar with the Hanover digital billboard? There's one, we have one at the Hanover Mall. Um, what we've done with the town of Hanover and some other uh, neighboring towns to be a good partner, we put up a lot of um, local businesses up on that billboard during dead time that, that have been from that billboard. Um, the Nolo Clipper, uh, we, we, we put him up for a weekend and he saw an exponential spike in his business. And this is someone that wouldn't normally uh, be able to utilize that um, type of platform, uh, be it a cost or, or whatnot, but we try to help the local businesses drive people from the highways to downtown Pembroke to some of the smaller businesses that just don't have the budget to advertise. Um, so. And doing that, there's always unsold space, and we, we try to help them out through that program. Um, again, it's frequency. People are driving by the billboard. It's repetition. They're seeing the message. You drive by three or four times, and you realize, oh, you know what? I need a haircut. It's there. It's someone that they probably didn't think that they had a business. Um, it's great with the highway. Lost that. Uh, law enforcement. 
we do partner, uh, it's not a partner, it's, it's actually mandated. Uh, we have to be compliant with Amber Alerts. So if there is an Amber Alert in the area, the FBI actually does take over the billboard for a period of time, whether they, uh, depending on how long that Amber Alert would last, um, if it lasts 24 hours, it's taken over the full 24 hours. If it's a week, it's, the time decreases as it goes on, but it's usually the majority of the billboard. And this is all federally regulated. They, just have complete access to the board. So it's a great device in that um, aspect. There's been 57 cases uh, directly tied to information being communicated across the billboard. Uh, <coughs> more recently, everyone can remember the October 1 uh, Las Vegas shooting. Um, the FBI utilized the billboards there and we partnered with them in other outdoor companies and there was over 4,000 uh, tips called in within the first 24 hours to help identify a Las Vegas shooter. So people do see it, it's there. It's, again, it's just a repetition reinforcement of it. 2015, over 84 billboards were utilized in helping to identify Baby Doe. Um, so that's kind of how law enforcement uses that, utilizes it. Um, the Mass DOT, uh, the messaging, it's always consistent, it's always going to say Mass DOT. This is separate than the hours that we'd give to the town. This is would just be the state time. Um, and again, it's part of our requirements as permit holders. We need to be compliant with that. Um, this is a great page. Th this really outlines the benefits to the community and what we've done in some of the success stories. Um, this is the Hanover Billboard. Um, the Hanover basketball team won the state championship. I think within 12 hours we, we had a congratulations for they could see it when they were coming home on the board. Um, Kate McCarthy's run, everyone knows that, that, that sad story. We try to partner um, with nonprofits to get the message out to help support um, events like that. Um, Jane, Jane Crocker, this is a great story. This is up in Peabody. Um, it was a young girl who entered a contest to get a school cafeteria makeover and basically we put her up on the billboards. She ended up winning the contest. We helped drive boats to the site for her to win. She not only won a prize for herself, but she also won a $150,000 cafeteria school makeover. So it's great for getting the message out on stuff like that. And it kind of reinforces the fact that people are seeing it, people do like it. Um, and then there's just other stuff, uh, town messaging, recycling, um, it's another way to get it out. Town meetings, you, you, you could advertise um, upcoming meetings if you, if you need you know, a big turnout. So it, it's got a lot of dual purposes for the town. We started, a, um, a after we kind of we kind of got uh, side, uh, side swipe with the Marshall Bill, we didn't know Marshall was proposing it. Um, they kind of came in. So what we did when we found that out, we wanted to be very clear with our message. We wanted everyone to know what we were proposing black and white, we wanted to, to show everyone that you know, we had a plan, this is what we were doing. Uh, we sent a petition out last week. Uh, it's, it was, it's still very early stages. We have 100 signatures of all Pembroke residents, uh, just showing a map of just where everyone is kind of uh, across the town, showing that you know it's not just the people away from the billboard, it's everyone. We have some people on Oak Street up there. Um, all, we, we've actually taken the time to met with all the abiders. We, talk to them about any concerns they might have, how they may feel. They've all been great. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have them speaking on our behalf at our ZBA hearing next week. Um, this is just a picture of the site of where we're proposing the billboard. As you can see, it's an industrial zoned area. It's adjacent to the highway. It's not intrusive. It's, it's set pretty far back from Oak Street itself. We're over 2,000 feet from the nearest uh, residential complex, the apartment buildings. In the residential zoning, we're about 1,000 feet away from that. So if you were to pick any place on the map, this is the ideal place to do something like this. And it kind of it just fits in the harmony of the street. Um, and that's kind of that's a real accelerated version of kind of what we're proposing. Um, and then if you flip to the front, we actually have gone and outlined kind of what we're proposing from the town uh, to the town. Um, talked a little bit about the project history, kind of some of the hardships at the site, and why we think this is a good utilization of the property. And then we obviously just talked about, you know, we reached out to the abutters, 
they're on board with us. Um, and now, now our steps are going to the DBA. Um, yes, that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. So I don't know if we have any questions or. Well, thank you for coming in with this presentation. It certainly looks like a good proposal for the town. Does anybody have any questions? Dan? Uh, so we heard this presentation uh, a couple of weeks ago at the Capital Fund Study Committee. Uh, we were asked by the petitioner <clears throat> to come to the committee. Um, I mentioned to them that it, it that might not be the, the, the best purview to hear it, but we did have interested members of the community on the committee so uh, it wasn't a waste of time it was it was uh, well received by that committee and myself because um, I think this sign uh, has the potential to bring in revenue for the town without being a detriment to the neighborhood so for the board and the public's um, knowledge the reason they're at the ZBA is uh, lit signs are specifically excluded by bylaw, by zoning bylaw in town. So they applied for a permit and the building inspector rightly deni denied it. And the, the next step is to go to the ZBA to ask for relief and that's where they are now. And the ZBA meeting is next week, is it? Next week, yes. So the, the ZBA meeting uh, will be next week. They will hear the evidence, uh, make a determination. I think that um, when we're done with our questions here, uh, if this board is uh, for this project, then we as a board can write a letter to the ZBA uh, encouraging them to consider relief from from the zoning bylaw. It's their decision. It's they're the board that uh, that makes that decision. But a favorable nod from the selectmen uh, could be helpful if if we feel that way. No, I think it's a great idea myself. Um, and there's a couple of different reasons for it, and one that he brought up was that um, Marshfield does own a piece of land over on the Pembroke side. And um, quite some time ago, um, they petitioned to put a tower up, and, um, and Pembroke denied it. So it went across the highway, and now Marshfield is uh, reaping all the benefits of uh, the antennas and all that, and it's still being seen by the same people that that didn't want it up there because they didn't want to see uh, a tower being put up there. But uh, before Marshfield acts and puts a sign up on the Pembroke side and they end up benefiting by it instead of us, I think it would be a good idea to do that and I'd be, I would be very supportive of it. Uh, besides the 32000 a year that's supposed to go to the town, uh, since you've done it in other towns such as Hanover, what kind of taxes are they benefiting from this sign? So Hanover was developed, um, digital billboards really, the, they started to roll out in 2012-2013, state regulations were written in 2013. Uh, Hanover was on the early side of it, they already had a billboard existing and they technically already had a digital billboard. Mm. Um, it was just more of just enlarging that structure. They don't have a community benefits program. We try to be a good partner and we put them up on the board whenever they've requested, but there's no actual financial component for them. They're just, mm. uh, just regular taxes, part of the mall, and um, whatever the billboard structure added to it. Okay. Then what kind of benefit is it for your company? I mean, you're putting it up, which is great, going to help the town out sure. to advertise, but mm. what is your company benefit out of putting the, this up for us? Oh, uh, well, so the, the <coughs> we're going to the town, the state, advertising, we're obviously going to sell advertising space on the other remaining clips. Um, the type of client, again, type of clients that we're going to sell to are more national clients, but we're also going to help, we're going to work with the local chamber of commerce when they're, when there's dead space to help get them up. And we, we've actually done that um, at Hanover, I think. All right, well, the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce, we put them up on the um, handle bill where I think we put six or seven businesses up there and we've gotten great feedback. Um, and again, that's what the device is for. It's not only a revenue generation, it's there to help the community and just drive traffic to these businesses that might just get skipped over. You know, if there's traffic on Route 3 heading down to the Cape, it's a great opportunity to get off, get something to eat, go shopping, a store that people might not necessarily know that was there. Last one. Sorry. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> and uh, when this structure, if it is approved and put up, how long does it take for these structures to go up? 
So the actual, so it's kind of the process would be this. If, if the town, if we were to get relief and we receive a municipal permit, um, we petition the state to go to a state public hearing. Um, state usually, it's about 60 days to 90 days <coughs> with the hearing date. Um, and then they're, they're anywhere from 30 to 60 days if everything goes well. To actually build the, cons the structure after we have the state permit is about two weeks. Um, so the, the actual physical construction period is pretty quick. It's more the permitting process and just kind of getting through all the, receiving all the municipal sign-offs. Well, thank you for answering those questions, Arthur. Yeah, the, um, the land that Marshfield owns is Maryland Street, I think. It comes across the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, why do they not need some kind of zoning relief? They, they do, but they're actually not going through it in that avenue. They're, they're actually trying to change the bylaws themselves. Um, we try to handle it a little bit differently. We, we, we want to be a good party. We want to be a good neighbor. We're going to be here for a very long time. We want to get the temperature of the community. We don't want to just rush in and change your bylaws. We want to go through the proper avenues. We want to go from the ZBA. We want to hear from the public on how to do this correctly. If you go in and just change the bylaws, then people are all of a sudden stuck with this device, and they may not want it. Um, they, they chose a different path. They, they are, we're also a little bit further ahead of them as far as like what we're doing, so the only way they could kind of pass this is to go and change the bylaws. Um, so I'm assuming that, that that's the avenue that they chose because of that. Hey, do you know something about that? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, Marshfield, uh, town meeting in Marshfield passed an amendment to their zoning bylaw that allows billboards in that industrial zone. And that industrial zone is the one that creeps over t onto the west side of Route 3. It's a very sl small sliver of land, but that was adopted by uh, Marshfield Town Meeting at their most recent annual town meeting. Obviously, that's going to need to go through the AG's office and all that. Um, so that's the, the Marshfield situation at this particular time. Now, the reason you folks are in front of the ZBA is that you're going to need a variance from the ZBA on a non-accessory sign. Exactly. Right. And a non-accessory sign is a sign that is not dealing with the business on the property that it is located. So they're not allowed under our zoning bylaws, but the ZBA has the right to, you know, to take this under consideration and to have a, and they have the authority to uh, grant a variance to the zoning bylaws, and that's why the company is in front of the ZBA next week. It's on a non-accessory sign. Dan? I see the chief assessor here. Um, Kathy, they have mentioned that they're willing to have a pilot uh, payment of lieu of taxes to, to the town of a total of $32,000 minus what uh, their assessment would be. Uh, could you speak to that for us, and are we getting sure. a good deal? Do you, do you want me to stand here and speak to it? Hold on. <laughs> yes, so good evening. Um, the term pilot, I think, gets a little bit confused. Pilot is actually payment in lieu of tax, which would indicate that it is exempt from taxation. This will not be exempt from taxation, so we can't enter into uh, a pilot. I know that there are some uh, businesses that enter into some agreement that they've come to with the town, which may be in addition to their taxation, but this will be taxed. So I don't have in front of me what you have. I, I did see an earlier version of something that said pilot, and I had a discussion with the town administrator and said this is not exempt. We do not have the authority under the law to enter into a pilot. So if there's some type of agreement that the town is going to do in addition to tax, I, I suppose that's something that you could consider, uh, but it will be taxed. Right, and Kathy, before you go, uh, a, a pilot may be a misnomer here that they've used, uh, but their total payments to the town uh, are $32,000, so whatever property tax they have they're paying on, on, on the sign, uh, they would include above and beyond that to a total of $32,000 to the town. Yeah. We've changed it to a community benefits agreement versus pilot. Okay. Just, just based on that. Okay, so at, you know, at this outset, we we I don't yet know the, the size of the sign or the cost to build or any of those things. But from the assessor's point of view, we'll tax it according to whatever is there, and then whatever agreement the town comes to. If it is over and above whatever the taxation is, then that's something that you all would agree. With. 
to I see. To clarify that it's community benefit. Yeah, it is. Pilot. Yeah, the original version was a pilot and then okay. we ended up being in some discussions. Sure. Very good. And could I just add on to what Bill said earlier about losing uh, losing tax revenue to Marshfield? Uh, the tower, the radio tower that he spoke of is WATD. WATD wanted to <coughs> move into Pembroke at um, uh, where Pembroke Woods is in that area, uh, but some folks in, Pe in Pembroke didn't want it. They moved right across the street to the former dump. WATD means at the dump, ATD. <laughs> so they're getting all the revenue from that. We're not. All right, thank you for that. Any members in the audience think that anybody have a question? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board of Selectmen send a letter of recommendation to the to the ZBA uh, encouraging them to uh, look favorably upon the upon this project and look favorably on granting relief. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so that passes the end of Thank you for coming in. Um, it's it's possible. It, it is possible, but <clears throat> uh, to, to set a precedent. Uh, but this this sign it, location is ever is heavily regulated by the state uh, with with their zoning setbacks. So it's uh, it's at a unique spot in town. Uh, so these signs are not uh, able to be located. Uh, you probably refer no, to the one on 50, 53, which we, we had some issues with. Uh, so these, this sign, this sign uh, under the, the state regulations, are I, they will not mushroom in town. I do not. I don't foresee that. If, if that was the fear. Yeah, Mr. Rawl mentioned that it's a thousand feet between signs. Is that is that accurate, or am I missing something? It's a thousand feet. Signs, but there's a lot of other things that come in, in zoning. Um, the, the industrial zoning, that, that's a real component. Um, there, there's not a lot of other areas. I think there's three or four properties in that area that are, all, that are actually zoned industrial. So it's just the nature of it. 53 would be really tough. You have residential, you have mixed business. Even if the town would grant a permit, they may not pass it to see inspections, they may not get the property. So, the side wouldn't support the potential revenue at those conditions, which is to make sense. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to old business. Does anybody have anything under old business tonight? I do have one thing. Ed, have you been able to look into banning electronic trucks? We've, uh, we were looking at that, and uh, we're trying to find something in this state that would allow us to do that very thing right now, so we're still, we're, we still have that in mind. All right, thank you. Moving on to the town administrator's report. Uh, one quick thing, I uh, want to report from Mike Belletti that um, we did not have a lot of traffic at the recycling center this past Sunday. Uh, not this Sunday, but the Sunday before, because we, they were closed on Mother's Day. So we're going to be open the next uh, two Sundays on the 22nd and the uh, 20th and the 27th. And so um, Sabrina and I were talking about that earlier, and we'll definitely have it as a high priority on our website and also on our Facebook page. So um, we just want to let everybody know that the Recycling Center is going to be open on Sundays uh, through the month of May. So we have two more Sundays to be open. It's getting a lot of traffic on Saturday. Just want everybody to know that um, that we decided to make it uh, have it open on uh, uh, three of the four Sundays in May. Is this going to be for hazardous materials also? No. No. no, we already had our hazardous, hazardous material today, yeah. and we'll have another one scheduled for the fall. Very good. 
Moving on to ask the selectmen. Does anybody have anything to that tonight? Uh, yeah. First, Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to make sure that the folks in town re recall that uh, Lou Stone, who just finished his term here as selectman, is the one that implemented Ask the Selectman. It's been a great tool for the folks in town to uh, ask questions and have them answered in, in a public board selectman setting. So I just wanted to make sure, make sure we all uh, remembered Lou for uh, one of the many good things that he's done for this town. Thank you for that. He was a great selectman, and he was, uh, you know, re really good uh, hard, hard worker. I mean, as far as selectman goes, the guy was always doing something. Every day you saw him, he was out there doing something, pounding on the streets, and, and uh, really knew his stuff before he came to his meetings, and, uh, you know, in the background, and certain, certain things. So uh, he's going to be greatly missed by me. Yeah, he, we owe him most of the truck restricted uh, streets. That he did a great job in getting the neighborhoods back to being neighborhoods again. Yeah. Yeah. This trail will be greatly missed. Not about that. One thing I would like to say under Ask the Selectman is we actually have a new Eagle Scout in town, Brandon Devine. So, you all want to say congratulations to Brandon. Congratulations. <laughs> now, is that something that is going to come up for, uh, or they've already appointed it? Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. So Next Sunday. Sunday. So I think it's something that we need one of the selectmen to go to, and usually one of the selectmen volunteer to go to it and present them with a uh, certificate from the town. Either a friend Brian so I can go if nobody else can go. We'll be happy to tackle. Thank you, Arthur. And we need a vote on the congratulatory letter. Well, it's automatic. Uh -huh. All right, very good. Congratulations again, Brian. Next section of the meeting is new business. Does anybody have anything under new business tonight? All right, there we go. Move on to the upcoming issues. First of which, on May 21st, we'll be meeting with the IT committee for recommendations regarding RFP submissions for IT services. On June 4th, 11th, and 25th, there will be the annual reappointments. And lastly, on June 18th, the summer schedule begins. A lot going on in town. Ed, do we have a need for executive session tonight? Yes, sir. You have three items, but we're only going to do number four, the last one that you have. So All right. Mr. Chairman, before you go into executive session, yes. I uh, just want to put in a pitch here for. Um, it's an uh, advisory committee. Obviously, uh, John is uh, submitting his resignation. So, at this moment, we'll have three openings. We just want to get it on TV for anyone that's uh, thinking about it. Um, you know, it's, uh, you don't need to have a numbers background. We can deal with a lot of issues that have nothing to do with numbers. We're just trying to get the word out there. Very good. Anybody interested? The advisory committee is looking for new members. Very good way to get into town politics. Mr. Chairman, I would move we enter executive session on discuss the deployment of security personnel and devices as strategies with respect there to specifically oh. IT. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. We'll need to take a roll call. Dan? Aye. Yes. 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 All right, so we have five in favor for moving into executive session. Will there be a need to come back into regular session? Yes, sir. No, so this concludes tonight's public session. Thank you for coming in, everyone.